So, this would be uh, the time to start this program, I suppose. Is this uh, commonly how uh, Peter would uh, begin a program, Kevin? Well, yeah, we just kind of just talk so just, before uh, we start. Just uh, just talk about anything to- sort of thing? Yeah, pretty well, like whatever's going on. I don't know. Uh, what what uh, what do you think I should uh, talk about to start the show? Uh, uh, if I was you, I uh, something something that people maybe don't know about you. Well, okay, um, people on the internet, I am death, and uh, I think that uh, 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 one thing you might not know about me is that I love running. Running. Yeah, I love running. <laughs> It's one of my favorite pastimes. One of my, uh, it's just one of my most pleasurable experiences that I have okay. is running. Yeah. Yeah. You know, I, my favorite part is the look on the jogger's face. <laughs> hey, they never see it coming. Ah. Yeah. I just, uh, get this show started. That good? Yeah, that's good. Theme song it then, Kev. <laughs> Wonderful reception. Thank you. I usually only get a reception like that from nursing homes. <laughs> no rim shot, Kev. I God. Don't know where the fuck it is. I'm trying to <laughs> try to loosen up Death's image here. <laughs> Anyways, I uh, welcome everyone to the Dutch Hall. I am guest host for this week, maybe even for this month. Death. Uh, thank you. Yeah. yeah. And joined this week by one human and one robotic creation of humans. Mm-hmm. The first to introduce the human, Kevin Van Dungeon. Hey, I'm a little nervous this week. Huh? I'm a little nervous this week. You are? Yep. Me too. I've never hosted before. I'm curious if this is the death of this show or... Uh, you can't kill what was already dead, Kevin. Fair enough. You are the expert. Yes. You like this new rod I got? I, I love your rod. <laughs> or the sickle thing? It yeah. looks like a, a, a human skull of some sort uh, mm-hmm. fashioned in the front of it to make you in, uh, fear me more and, uh, and appreciate life. This skull appears angry, too. Yeah. It's a nice little touch. Mm-hmm. Anyways, uh, I want to also introduce the robotic creation of humans mm-hmm. uh, that sits uh, with uh, Pete. Normally, Robot Dave, everyone. Thanks a lot, Pete. Oh, how dare you? Hey, uh, uh, Robot uh, Dave, um, I remember uh, how... <laughs> Wait, actually, I don't even... I remember I wanted to write a joke <laughs> at the beginning of this show <laughs> where I would say something about... Uh, <laughs> uh, uh, about someone that died that uh, would be very much like a kind of like uh, someone that like um, you'd be ashamed of being a fan of, mm-hmm. and then that person died. Like, uh, oh, I got one. <laughs> okay. Yep. Oh, hey, robot Dave. Yes. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> do you remember um, how you couldn't stop? Uh, how you were really upset when uh, George Michael died? <laughs> Scarring is maybe a better word. Yes. <laughs> See, I knew it. Yeah. Was that because you liked it? No, never mind. I'm not going to ask any follow up questions. I know this thing is limited. Wow. Well, you I... humans are limited. This thing is even more limited. He only says like what five, six things. Yeah. That's yeah. True. Maybe the person that runs you could pull a few more clips. Eh? Oh, that's oh fantastic. Yeah, thank you, Dave. Thank you. So that is the show, and as you know, I am death. I'm filling in for Pete. Uh, Pete has been doing a writing project 
uh, about death. Mm-hmm. Uh, so for the next month, he's going to be pretty much consumed with me. So he's uh, in order for me to share my wisdom with him, uh, so he can do his little writing. Uh, I get to do walk around in his body, do some comedy shows, mm. and uh, do some podcasting, and it helps me to uh, kind of like uh, spruce up my image with you humans. Yeah, Beca- because uh, you guys have really painted me as being like such a rotten thing that all you do is uh, is like uh, you do all these like harmful things to yourself in order just to avoid me, right? And I don't think that's right. I don't think you should avoid me. I'm just little old death. <laughs> Sweet, merciful me. You just need an image cleanup. That's all. Yeah. That's what I think. So I thought maybe this time, this show, what I could do, because I've been really fortunate, you know, being death and everything, I've been really fortunate to, I've met all of you guys. I mean, I've, I, I've met every human that has passed through. Since the beginning of life itself, you know, I've seen the worst and the best of humanity. I have uh, got to do um, some of the most incredible things in my life. And I thought instead of just like, <clears throat> you know, uh, looking at the bad parts, you know, look at it, uh, all the cool stuff I got to do. You know, I got great stories, you know, we got, you're going to tell us some stories. Why not? I'll tell you anything you need to know. I've, I've done it all. You know, I've. I've done so many cool things. You know, sometimes I do things because I'm so fascinated with humans Mm -hmm. that I just want to really enjoy the human experience, you know? Okay. You know, that's why I, for example, that's why I took a bath with Whitney Houston, you know? (laughs) I never, eh? yeah, I never had taken a bath. Well, I I took one with Jim Morrison, too. No kidding. Yeah, now that you think of it, eh? You do forget. But once in a while, you want to know, what's it like? What's that like, you know? Just to have a nice warm bath. Warm bath. Hmm. Warm bath. That's you know, same thing. You know, like uh, you guys, I want the, to know what it's like to be a human, a right. full human. You know, that's why I took a dump with the king of rock and roll. <laughs> Did you, oh, Mr. Yeah. Wesley? Yeah, Elvis. You were there. Yeah. I was like, I want to take a shit. You know, I was like, I w- I've never done it. Right. It's like, who better to take a dump with than the king, baby? Yeah. See how he does it. Yeah. It's gross. I don't see why you guys don't brag about that stuff. <laughs> it's gross, man. <laughs> yeah, it's not yeah. as much fun, you know. It's a, that's the thing. So, I, I you know, you I, some of the human experiences, they're not like, they don't really do it for me. That's why I don't do it very often. Right. You know, mostly I like to party. Yeah. Yeah, that's what I like to do. I party with the greats, you know. Yeah. Oh, who's yeah. some, who's some, uh, tell oh. me some good ones. Oh, like uh, you gotta put up, uh, you gotta put Farley and Belushi up there yeah. as some of the most fun guys to party with. Uh, shit, man, Amy Winehouse. Yeah, right. Uh, boozer. What? Boozer. Oh yeah, she was a boozer. She, I booze with her quite a bit. And uh, you think about uh, like artists. This is real. Why I party with artists so much is because they are always flirting with me. Eh? Yeah. They're always tempting me. Mm-hmm. You know, and then they hang out with me, and then they wonder why bad things happen you know you, you've been flirting and tempting me and i get carried away and all of a sudden i'm the bad guy here mm-hmm. you know stop flirting with me stop tempting me mm-hmm. you know I, have, but, I, have, I wonder about some why i wonder about some like how like you know me you were like amy i know that's a 27 club but uh, yeah, yeah what about like uh ozzy osborne or, or keith richards <laughs> i like those guys but uh they just don't um <clears throat> You know, they just haven't done anything to really, uh, well, Keith used to tempt me quite a bit, mm. you know, he tempted me, but, uh, for some reason I just never really got around. Like I just never really, maybe it's the fact that he's so ghoulish, you know, <laughs> he's just not my type. You know? <laughs> yeah. I don't know. He's good for your image. Yeah. Sometimes I just miss one or I just, it just never worked out, but you know, uh, I did, uh, but I was hanging out. I, I. I used to hang out with the Stones quite a bit in the day. I took, uh, I did, who did I party with there? The uh, bass player, for sure. The bass player, yeah, Brian something or other. I don't remember his name. Fuck <laughs> yeah. But if I, better, you're partying with the drummer not long ago, too. Yeah, I just, I just, I, actually, I just met him. Did you? You know, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, that was it. I mean, after a while, I was like, how much more of the Stones can we all take, you know? Yeah. Like, I mean, are they going to tour forever? Like, I got I to do something, you know? Yeah. 
let some other bands have a turn. Yeah, exactly. Same reason why I took Trebek, you know? Like, give someone else a chance to host that show. Yeah. You're going to host it forever? I mean, Jesus Christ. Good gig, though. <laughs> Huh? It was a good gig for him. Yeah, good gig for him, but like, yeah. give someone else a shot. You know, like, I almost took Bar- uh, Bob Barker for the same reason. If he wasn't going to step aside. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Yeah, good thing he let Drew Carey have it. But he let Drew Carey have it. Yeah. You know, if if Trebek would have done that, maybe we'd be in a different situation right now. <laughs> Stubborn. Right? Trebek wanted to keep the show right to the end. I'm like, that's your choice. Yeah, step aside. Maybe Trebek would be like fucking on a boat somewhere, you know, sipping Just a tequila. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah. Anyways, people get pissed off at me, right? Yep. There's, you know, people got pissed off at me for Swayze. I don't know why. Don't be mad about me for Swayze. Be mad at Netflix for putting on Roadhouse. Yeah. Right. Nonstop. Or what's the dancing movie too? Uh, I dirty ca- Dancing. I didn't care much for Dirty Dancing, but I did fucking love Roadhouse. Yeah. Oh, that's a good movie. Yeah. I couldn't wait to see Swayze after I watched that one. If I would have watched that thing in the theaters, we'd never have to sit through Point Break. <laughs> Fair enough. Yeah. Yeah. Well, he did rip the heart out of somebody and wrote it right out of his chest. Right out of his chest. Terry Funk was in that one, too. Yeah. Yeah. I oftentimes hang out with wrestlers as well, but I left Terry Funk alone. Yeah. You know, for some reason. I don't know if that's because I like them or don't like them, to be honest with you. Some of them I just get carried away with. Right. But other ones I'm allowed to just, like, you know, be in their presence and just, like, leave them alone, you know? Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. I don't know. I can't. I'm, I got to just say, you know, sometimes I get it right, sometimes I get it wrong. Po buddy's nerfect. <laughs> right? I see what you did there, Death. Yeah. <laughs> I'm learning out your little tricks there. Yep. Um, Softening the old image. Yeah, trying to soften the image. Man, I've done some cool stuff though. Hey, uh, I went. Uh, I like. Uh, I like the inventions you guys make. Oh yeah. Yeah, you guys make some cool inventions. Like, uh, you made a lot. Of, I like hot rods. Yeah, I like nice cars. Fast you know? cars. Yeah, street cars, race cars. I like all kinds of cars. You know. Mm-hmm. You know, I went on some really cool rides. You know, through the Hollywood Hills. You know. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I went driving with. Uh, James Dean. Yeah, I heard of him. Yeah, yeah, that was fun. I went uh, <laughs> went on a little trip with uh, who? Uh, Paul Walker. Yeah, ever hear of that guy? He's in the Fast and the Furious. I'm like, I'm gonna give that. I'm gonna go for a car ride with that guy. Never watched the movie, but me, me, me neither actually. But I knew he was in it. Yep. Right. So I must be good at driving cars. Yeah. He was for a bit, and then. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> oh. 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 And then uh, my favorite, though, yeah. my favorite car experience, I'd have to say, was was being in the final lap of the Daytona 500 contending for the victory uh-huh. in the, the fucking car. black number three oh, yeah. <laughs> with the Intimidator himself, Dale Earnhardt, man. That's going to bother some people. Dude, how could I pass up an opportunity like that? Yeah, you know, I was in, we could see the finish line, man. Mm-hmm. It was awesome. Anyways, so you got to race cars. Yeah, man, I've done been in tons of race cars. I've raced all in all the series, yeah. every series, you know, with all the with some of the greats, Gilles Villeneuve, uh-huh. right? Uh, who else did I? Uh, uh, who's that one guy? Uh, he's a Canadian guy. You should know him, Greg something or other. Moore, Greg Moore. No, no, who's he? No, the one guy that. I don't know. Luganus? <laughs> no, he's a no, diver. No, he's a diver. Yeah, I didn't I didn't get him, I don't think. Is he still alive? I think so. Luganus? I can uh, give it a goog if you want me to. He made it through the 80s, eh? Yeah. Wow. <laughs> 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 really tossed a bullet there. I bet you there were some sweaty test results being waited for, eh? No kidding. In those days with Luganus. Anyways, um, yeah, I never saw Luganus. We had some great things. But, you know, my favorite thing... Especially back in the olden days, you know, when you guys first came out with air travel mm-hmm. and rock and roll, Oh, I mean, you mix those two things together and then yeah. I was just too much temptation for me to pass up, you know, like, uh, you got Randy Rhodes that way. Oh dude, man. I got to, I got to go on, on private planes with so many cool people. Yeah. You know, I was there, I was there the day the music died. Were you? Yeah. Huh. Buddy Holly, Big Bopper, mm-hmm. that, uh, Richie Valens. You know? Bamba. Yeah. yeah. I was a I wish that that American Pie song would die. You know? 
Yeah. You know, I think him saying it was the day the music died in a song. I think it might have been. You're just trying. Are you trying to say, you, are you trying to just to like, you know, like hedge your bet that this is a shitty song you're making? <laughs> you're saying music's dead already. You know, I'm just making this crap. You know, like a, it's dead. Yeah. The, if the music died, then you wouldn't be singing this fucking song, would you? That's right. Don McLean. I haven't got to him yet, have I? I don't know. Maybe I, I know. did. I'd have to look that one up. Unmemorable. I only remember the people I like. Right. And then some of the ones that you guys keep asking me about. Christ almighty. <laughs> Jesus Christ. You show that picture of me and Epstein all over the place, making it look like I'm up to something bad. Right. I'm death. I'm not evil. <laughs> <laughs> I've met him one time in jail, you know, like, it's the only time I met that creep. That was just a... Uh... Uh, he he did it to himself, didn't he? According to the reports, who Epstein? Uh, yeah. Oh well, you know, uh, I was there. <laughs> <laughs> uh, he's still alive, I think. Don McLean. The thing about the thing about no matter what the circumstances of his death were, I'm called to action. Right? Yeah. I got to do my job. You know, and if you let the nature take its course, you know, it's either going to be me or Mother Nature that gets you. You know, yeah. some form or, or other, it's me, me or Mother Nature, you know. Mother Nature, it's got a lot of different aspects of it working for you. Sickness, disease, all that stuff. That's in Mother Nature's camp, right? Uh, they help me out sometimes, but most of the time it's me. And then sometimes you guys, you human beings, decide to take it in your own hands. And then you start to do it for me, mm -hmm. right? Either way, I got to show up at the end to let you guys go to the next world or whatever you want to call it right mm -hmm. well <clears throat> if for example you humans decide to take it in your own hands t to insist upon death mm -hmm. whether it be at your own hands or at the hands of another human being you are making me do your work right All i right. have to go now and and go escort that person to the uh, great beyond but i had my own schedule for that dude you know, oh. leave me alone. You're like hecklers at a comedy club. You think you're helping, but you're not. You're making mm. things worse. Leave it to the professionals. I will take care of it on my own time, you know. So, but either, so you, you make work for me. Please. I got a schedule of old people to get to. I probably, I probably had to get to Keith Richards already, but I haven't been able to. Scheduling you know? conflicts. It slips through the cracks, you know, like mm. I had all of a sudden go to handle these murders over here. And I couldn't get to Betty White, you know? <laughs> These are the things that I have to, you know, I have to juggle my schedule. And then people keep getting older. Population keeps getting bigger. And I'm not doing my job because you guys, don't worry if I fall behind naturally. Mother Nature helps me out. Yeah. I got things to help me. I don't need you guys. You know, you guys just worry about life. Be uh, comforted, comforted comforted in the fact <laughs> that uh i will get to everyone eventually you know yes, you have an enemy you know just instead of you being uh murderous to that enemy just take some solace in the knowledge that i will eventually get to him hmm. you know they're gonna die the world would be a better place if people just listen to you yeah exactly right i don't need i don't need your help i'm good i'm good at what i do like, just let me keep doing it, and I think it would be a better place, really. So, like, just... But you humans, man, you want to control everything, man. You want to control everything. It's like, you want to control Mother Nature. You want to control death. You want to, you want to like... You guys think you know better than all of us, you know? But you're inevitable. Yeah, I'm inevitable. And I'm also... You know, I'm wait, you guys cannot comp compete with me with an inevitability. You can't compete with Mother Nature. You can't compete with father time, you know? Well, you, you guys all work together? Yeah, we're all inevitable. We're all, like, just things you, that are outside of your control. It's funny, man. You guys take Mother Nature, you know? Like she's She gives you, like, natural beauty that you couldn't even fathom, you know? She gives you natural beauty. You humans will mow it down to put up one of your ugly bullshit things. Yeah. Right? Yep. It's like a person making you... Uh, you know, beautiful piece of art, you know, it's like a Van Gogh or a Monet or something like that. And you just take a big shit on it, you know, <laughs> yeah. and you say, look at what we did. 
Yeah. Maybe uh, smear it. Yeah. It's great. It's great, humans, you know. You got to understand, you guys think you're pretty special. You think you're the top of everything, right? Mm-hmm. To us, you guys are really dumb. <laughs> like, you're limited. You have no ability to even understand. You can't. You don't have a good concept of me. This no. is what you think of me. <laughs> <laughs> Would you get that at the dollar store, Death? Or yeah, oh. yeah, it was cheap, man. I don't have a lot of money. Money's not. Money's another thing you guys came up with, not me. You know, yeah. that's not a natural thing. That's not something that any of us had anything to do with. Money. It's helped me out quite a bit, but it's nothing I had anything to do with. You guys must have invented it. Yeah, did you guys in, and the internet. Did yeah. You guys invent that too. Yeah, so one of us did. A bunch, I guess maybe a bunch of people got together and did it. But yeah, maybe that was a devil that invented the internet. I don't know. They're usually the ones that come up with a good porn idea. <laughs> the devil. <laughs> yeah, mm. yeah. That's a fun thing, eh? Uh, whacking off. Yeah, yeah. Did that with David Carradine. <laughs> yeah. and the guy from In Excess. Uh huh. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I got kinky with Carity. It's a new, t- new twist you put on it. And- yeah, yeah. Uh, that's definitely flirting with me. <laughs> yeah, I would say you so. You tie a rope around your neck and start whacking off. Uh, yep. Consider that flirting. Yeah. <laughs> Standing on a chair? Yeah, man. Too tempting for me. Too uh-huh. tempting. But a nice way to go. I suppose. I got to tell you something. Maybe this isn't the right time. But I don't know when the right time would be. But uh, I know you guys are real big on sexuality. You like to talk about it, right? Yep. Yep. And uh, I just want you to know that between me, <laughs> you, and the lamppost here. And our listeners. <laughs> <laughs> no, I think you guys have come a long way on your viewpoints on sexuality. So I feel comfortable saying this now. But... Uh, and it should be obvious to you if you look at it. But uh, seeing that I am genderless, mm-hmm. I don't know if it's proper to say that I'm gay. But uh, I will tell you, uh, I fuck dudes. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Uh, you'll notice, you know, that uh, dudes, uh, they will die uh, from having sex. Okay. Right? Yeah. That's me. Oh, that's you. Yeah, it's not a of heart. Course. It's not the big heart condition or nothing like that. It's well, just... that's what it. That's what happens to them when I fuck them. Ah, I see. You see? I get it now. Yeah, you don't hear of me fucking a woman to death, do you? No, nope. That's no. No, I do not do that because icky. <laughs> you like guys. I like I like dudes. Yeah, I like yeah, dudes. Cool. Whereas the the. Um, uh, women, you know, mm-hmm. usually their deaths, you'll notice if they die in a sexual manner, that's, that's a, a human one. being that's yeah. done that, you know? Yep. I fuck dudes to death. <laughs> <laughs> Just wanted you to know that. Yeah. Um, which is, you know, you guys actually, that's the one death that you guys will kind of like at the funeral, the guy's friends are kind of like, proud of him in a know, way like, give him an old attaboy at the yeah. casket yeah oh poor pete i look at him sometimes after he's done having sex now and uh i'm like you want me to step in there buddy because you are not looking good you want a high five <laughs> yeah because he is like sometimes he he's quite tuckered out afterwards he? oh yeah, yeah he needs to take him a uh all half an hour to get over it yeah you know like i could easily see him dropping does he rest his eyes when he's done Oh, yeah. He's a little sleepy boy. <laughs> He's a little sleepy boy. Yeah. That's it. But, you know, it takes a lot out of the poor guy now. I think he's getting older. Yeah. Okay? That's another thing. Why you guys... Met, uh, you guys should be pissed off at Father Time, man. That guy's a cock. I think mm-hmm. we talked about this, but... That guy is just stubborn as a fuck, man. And inevitable, too. And you know what? Yeah. You, and, you can't and, cheat him. Yeah, Yeah. You know what, dude? Would it kill you... To slow down once in a while, eh? Yeah. Maybe people wouldn't be so afraid of me all the time if you would just slow down. Take it easy time. Yeah. But he's like, no, I do what I do. I plot along with at my own pace and fuck all you guys. And that's how time works. Yeah, people get facelifts and oh, yeah. talks and all that to try and beat father time, but father time just keeps ticking. 
Yeah, I don't know. You humans are crazy. You know, you'd rather look like a weird alien species than an old human. <laughs> eh? It's true. I don't understand what you're doing with all that stuff, but uh, you guys are entertaining as hell, man. You do lots of crazy stuff, you know? Mm. You tell people, you guys spend all your time, sorry, you guys spend all your time afraid of me, and then you tell your loved ones when uh, someone dies, you tell the loved one uh, they've gone to a better place. Yeah, we do that. Yeah, well, if I'm taking them to a better place, why are you afraid of me? They should be actually happy with you. You should be happy with me. Mm. So then I think, well, maybe you're just saying something that you don't really believe. And that's how humans cope with death. That's how humans cope with loss is, is they uh, tell lies to sad people. Hmm. Maybe. We do. Uh, oh, we do tend to lie. Yeah. I don't know. But it doesn't make sense to me. You're weird people. Hmm. You're weird people. How, what's your uh, how do you feel about grief? Grief? Yeah. Ah, grief is, it's confusing to me. You know, like, why would you guys, I don't, I don't feel it. You see a lot of it, though. <clears throat> yeah. I see people grieving me, and I don't get it. That's like, I think I'm just, it's like, it's like being like, uh, I don't understand your, gr- like, uh, what do you, uh, it, uh, like, it's because you're, you're so, you don't understand things. Like you're so limited. You don't get it, right? Mm. You guys get mad about it, you know? It's like, Jesus, man, you know, like getting mad uh, at me is like getting, uh, you know, mad at a movie you don't like because of the ending credits, you know? Hmm. It's not a, it's, I just happen no matter what, you know? The grief is selfish. Yeah, grief is like, yeah, I think it might be a little bit selfish because cause, uh, your loved one or whatever, they, they were, they're they not grieving. Well, they're dead. Yeah, they're happy. They're, they're, they're in a peaceful place you know other like, place according to what we say yeah i think it's better but i can't explain it to you and i'm not even allowed to tell you if it's good or bad oh, yeah, that's a, that's a that's, I, you have to write you got like a non-disclosure for that one yeah yeah it's part of the the, uh, the mystery is part of what keeps you guys um like in check you know uh-huh. it, it keeps balance if i but really i'm i'm just like uh Think of it like the great unknown, like the afterlife, regardless of what you believe, whether you believe in, um, whether you believe that we're just going to, like, let's say atheists. Okay. Let's take atheists, for example, right? right. They think you're going to rot in the ground. Yeah. Right. Okay. Well, atheists, if I'm rot, you're rotting in the ground and there's nothing. Well, you were nothing before you were born and you're nothing after you were born. So then you're just going back to what you were. Nobody was upset about being not born. Mm -hmm. So why would you be upset about being not alive? It's a wash, right? Yeah. So there, that's like pretty much the worst case scenario. But But I can establish I'm taking you back to what you already were, right? Yep. Now, let's say you believe in uh, an afterlife, you know? Well, if you believe in an afterlife and you believe the afterlife is infinite, right? Then infinite happens not only forever and ever after, but also but forever and ever before. So if you had an afterlife, you also have to have a before life. Mm-hmm. In which case, I'm taking it right back to where you were. You see? Yeah. Both cases, I'm just like, you want life is like a summer camp, and I'm like the bus driver taking you home to your parents. <laughs> you know? Yeah. But you just don't know if your parents are assholes or not, you know? <laughs> but they're going to be like after you, after a summer without you. Right. Because if you knew your parents were super cool, you'd want to get the fuck out of summer camp. Right. Because it's terrible. But uh, if you don't know if your parents are cool or shitty, mm-hmm. you stay at summer camp and you kind of fear the bus ride home. Mm. Right? And that's kind of what, uh, what death is like. No. So people aren't afraid of death. They're afraid of the unknown. They're afraid of what they don't know or what they don't understand. Yeah. And uh, both of those are, uh, some people don't even know they have a soul. No. In which case, what do they think I'm doing? You know, like, I'm I'm, I'm, I'm after the soul. You're a soul collector. Yeah, that's what I want to do. I want to collect them into my va- the, my vacuous face, and then they go into the afterlife. And it's great. Just a portal to the afterlife. Yeah, it was 
why is that bad? You know, I think you guys just like had a better uh, attitude with me and you didn't try to avoid me all the time. You guys wouldn't have the alcohol problems you got. You wouldn't be so fat. You wouldn't, you know, like uh, be whacking off your phones all the time. (laughs) You guys would be like, you know, maybe just like maybe enjoying some of the actual natural joys and wonders of life itself, not the concocted things you made up. <laughs> Suffering. There yeah. You go. Suffering is actually invented by you guys too. Because if you just looked at things differently, you wouldn't suffer. Just embrace it. Yeah. yeah. It's your brains that are doing that to you, the suffering. That's uh, that. You think the, uh does a does a plant like mourn does a tree mourn the loss of its leaves, you know? Like I don't know. Interesting. I don't think it does. No. But uh, maybe it does. Maybe they're crying over there. Yeah, Pete told me one time that some cultures uh, getting a haircut is a painful thing. Yeah. So it's that that I that yeah. There's a culture that where the getting a haircut is painful, and but um, pulling your tooth is not. Yeah. So it's all your, it's all in your mind, just like you just said, death. Yes, yeah, right. It's your brains that mess with you. I'm learning. That's why I'm got no interest in your brain. I got no interest in your brain or your body because they're limited. They're crappy. Mm-hmm. They're only meant for this, but your soul, your soul's eternal. Your soul goes forever, and that's the cool part about you. the The soul's cool. Your brain's crap. So, like, you ever have a thought where you think, um, "Man, that's fucked up." Yep. <laughs> <laughs> Had those. Well, uh, the person that's saying that's fucked up, that's your soul. Ah, right. The fucked up thing. That's your brain. Gotcha. Yeah. The soul is what you want to be. The brain's uh, what you. The brain's some sort of weird protection mechanism thing. It runs your body and stuff, but it also just like creates uh, these like paranoid uh, messages to you to keep you doing what you're already doing. You know what I mean? Yeah. And uh, the brain is like, uh, it'll fuck you over big time it'll try to tempt you hey uh just uh just watch more tv you know like uh, play some more candy crush whatever it is that it can get you with the brain saying avoid doing the things you really this your soul wants to do your brain's in conflict with your soul almost all the time you know that is a piece of garbage and it can stay here rotting in the ground on earth i have no use for it where I'm taking it. I'm, uh, I'm after the souls. Souls are a good part. That's a big, uh, another piece of the puzzle right there. I peel, just peel a layer of your onion right there. Yeah, the soul, you know. Yeah. You guys, uh, you know, I'm not just murdering, you know. Like, I don't murder at all. You know, I'm I'm offering a, a service that gives you relief, that gives you peace, that gives you, like, a, a, you know, like a... A reprieve from your suffering, you know. Mm. I'm giving you a, a grace from uh, a pain, you know. I'm giving you uh, uh, peace from conflict. Those are all the things that I give you. Time doesn't give you nothing. No. But gray hair and saggy balls. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> or and both gray <laughs> hair and saggy balls and gray hair and saggy balls. What yeah. could be worse than that? <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> Right, that's way worse than what I'm. I'm. I see it like I'm a good guy here. <coughs> yeah, you're actually providing relief from gray hair and saggy balls. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I will. If only people listen. Hey, don't take those <laughs> gross things with you. Nope. Just the soul. The soul's nice. Mm. You know, they say uh, if you ever watch those videos where people die and then you people do some sort of like uh, magic of some sort where you take them back. Mm-hmm. I did my job. And then you bring them back. Right. And then I got to do my job twice on one person. That's another thing you guys fuck with my workload, you know? Uh, that's why we're getting overpopulated. Yeah. You keep bringing people back to life. You keep, like, uh, causing me not to, you know, manage my own schedule by having to handle your urgent accounts. Like, hey, uh, no, no, this person decides right now they want to die. This person wants his neighbor to die. This person wants his wife to die. You know, like, mm-hmm. oh, God. It was like, I don't care what you guys want. Wait, I'm going to do it on my own time. You right. Know? Anyways. How annoying is it, like, when they bring somebody back, like, off the operating table? Yeah, it's terrible. I got to do the job twice, you know? Just wasted your time. You're wasting my time. Plus, you're fucking with the whole thing, you know? If you guys tell them what it's all about, then maybe... Uh, 
But, you know, I don't know. Maybe that's the pendulum swing thing. Maybe it's not all bad. You guys get a little bit of a hint on what it's like. Maybe you'll, like, be nicer to each other or, like, yeah. get it right. I don't know. I don't know what it's going to take, but I, think I personally am very upset when when it happens because I don't like the extra workload. But I saw this one guy. He said, um, and I, to be honest, I'm not completely sure what it's like. They don't really tell me. I haven't been there. I don't hang out there. I hang out here. Right. Like I'm, I'm the porthole, mm-hmm. right? I'm not wow. the, so I'm not, uh, there. I'm here taking you there. Mm-hmm. And then, uh, so I don't get to hang out there, but I understand that you guys talk, talk. This was on the day of the dead thing I was performing at last night too. Oh yeah. They said, another person said that, uh, apparently you, uh, they said that when you died, you went to this like big room or whatever, or like mm-hmm. this big thing, and then you first thing you learn, first thing you forget is like your name, and then you forget your how to talk, and then you forget the language in general. Like this is what this person said. Yeah, hmm. and then you eventually are kind of washed of the life, right? And then. Um, they uh, once you've washed away your past life, then they send you back. Hmm. Then they send you back, which is what what the Hindus think too, is they say that it'll they'll send you back. Well, in the Hindus, I historically I was um, people wanted um, I was a good thing. Mm-hmm. They wanted death, and that uh, life was um horrible and that reincarnation meant that you didn't live a good enough life yeah. and you had to come back try it again yeah and if you if you actually live a pure enough life if you uh, uh, achieve like pure or a true enlightenment then you don't have to come back anymore nirvana yeah then you're done rock uh, band yeah but the idea is never to come back to life that life is the punishment mm. which i think that's not right Hmm. Either. I have a question, Death. What? How do you feel about these people that say they can communicate with the dead? Oh, that's hilarious. <laughs> yeah, that's so fun to watch, man. You guys are full of shit. <laughs> Holy mackerel, I watch you guys just lie to people. <laughs> oh, that is hilarious. Man. You ever go and just mess with those sessions just for funsies? Uh I, like uh, I will watch them, you know, but uh, no, just pure entertainment. I just I just watch it from afar. I don't like to get too close to those kooks. Once and once and done with them, you know, like oh, yeah. I'm not spending tons of time just watching them from afar, you know, like uh, yeah. just crazy shit, man. They just uh, it's a little uh, cruel, really, if you ask me. Like, uh, but uh, some people seem to take comfort in it, and yeah. uh, if that whatever floats your boat, I don't know. To be honest, like uh, if a person dies and I don't get to their soul to pass them through. Right. And, you know, as I said, I'm busy. You know, shit happens. <laughs> so maybe, you know, maybe there's the odd soul that's uh, wandering around here and uh, they haven't had a chance to see me yet. You know, maybe that has happened. Uh, but the fact that you guys think you can talk to them or whatever, like that's nutty bananas, man. Huh. That, to, in my opinion, well, whatever you guys, you guys make a lot of crazy claims. <laughs> eh? <laughs> you really do. You guys, I think that you, you guys got a really warped sense of your importance. You know, as humans, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. I like whales. Yeah, yeah, I like them. Are oh, you kill whales? No, I'm not human that? death. I'm human death. Yeah, uh, there is whale death. There's a whale death. So it's a whale. He, he looks more like a whale. He's wearing a <laughs> <laughs> big fella bigger fella yeah kind of looks like you know like in Sil- the sylvester and tweety cartoons yeah. where the cats are always pulling the fish bones out of the garbage cans yeah. and the he's like that but a whale oh wow yeah, yeah. scary big yeah and oh. it'll come around uh it, you know same thing i mean i mean the elephant uh elephants have an elephant death you know wow yeah it's it's pretty sp- specified it's mostly for animals with consciousness you yeah. know you guys think that's only you, but you're wrong. You know, like hmm. there, there's like p- even pig, there's even pig death. Wow, I hear plants have uh, feelings too now. Oh yeah, plants do have feelings. Yeah, they're all. Uh, you guys are 
really all one organism, um, interconnected, uh, but your ego doesn't allow you to see it as well, as well. Uh, but, uh, you know, you're complex is what I'm saying. You guys are always, uh, puzzling. So oh. death, death is gassy. Um, oh, I should have really mic'd that one. That so, <laughs> so that's oh. a good length. So, uh, you get, you, uh, work alone. Yeah, I now, do work alone. Does, like, what Pete used to talk about going to a lot of conferences when he was in the banking business. Is yeah. there, like, a death conference where, like, you and the whale death and you and the, or are you just, oh, yeah, you yeah. guys all freelance? Well, no, the the inevitables will get together. Oh, okay. All of us will get together and just kind of look at how things are going, you know, periodically. Yeah. I don't know how that would translate to your time or not, but periodically we look at the numbers, you know. Uh-huh. And numbers, uh, you know. As I, I don't know, uh, we should be at around th- this planet here. It's built for about three billion. Ooh, or over. Yeah, I've uh, so uh, the pendulum has swung too far. There's too many people now, and uh, we think it's because we made me look a little bit too bad. You know, yeah, it's one of the reasons why I'm doing this tour. Mm-hmm. And uh, I got to tell you, uh, we talk about a lot of things. You know, sometimes we look at uh, introducing. Uh, new problems or diseases or things like that. Natural disasters. Is that why they're up? Uh, natural disasters uh, are, uh, yeah, because there's the, I'm behind. Okay. You know, cause so because I'm behind mother nature has to pitch in and just like sweep a bunch of you guys out. Hmm. But luckily for me, you guys are uh, easy to get for her. Yeah. You know, I got a hot tip for you guys. All right. You know, Human beings, hot tip. If you don't want your house to be uh, decimated with lava, don't build it at the base of a fucking volcano. How about that? <laughs> yeah. Yeah? Don't want it to fall in the ocean. Don't build it on a cliff. Hey, yeah, exactly. If you don't want uh, your home to be washed away, then don't fucking build it on the shores of her oceans that she use, you use uh, routinely uh, fucking cleans. Hey, you know, she's got redwood forest she has never not burned them to clean them <laughs> yeah she's never not done that yeah but you guys build your houses there mm-hmm. you know like you're tempting her and plus you treat her like shit yeah so i don't blame her i don't blame for what she does and it's very helpful for me because i'm falling so far behind like i think we're gonna need a couple more big ones you know yeah I don't know. You think yep. you think uh, one of these days you're just going to drop California right off the? Uh... Yeah, those guys are crazy, man. California, they uh, they got the San Andreas fault line there, mm-hmm. and uh, it's uh, it's 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 overdue uh, to uh, erupt uh, it by about. I think it was supposed to be around 1990. It was supposed to it was the hundred years or something that it was mm-hmm. supposed to go off. So we're about 30 years late on that thing the big one mm-hmm. and what about that big geyser mm-hmm. or whatever in the middle of hey you know what you got but i want to say you know what you guys did on the san andreas fault line <laughs> you, you you guys just thought it, because it's 30 years late it's never going to happen right and you it's completely built up with office buildings now it, it, she's gonna fucking have a heyday with you guys yeah 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 you know like you don't listen to what we say right you know like you don't we we are quite consistent with our inconsistency mm-hmm. here like you guys should uh, be a little bit more careful yeah sorry what are you saying about the other one ah uh, the guys i can't remember what it's called the guys uh it's in the middle of the country middle of the united at States. yellowstone yeah like uh old faithful that's it is yeah that a geyser that's a geyser okay yeah, well, you want to know what a geyser is? No, no, but it's set to blow soon too, isn't it? Cut some big damage. Oh, that's a volcano. I think the geyser goes off, but uh, there's geysers that go off all the time. That just spurts up water. Hmm. But maybe it's maybe it's, not, it's an indication that the thing's going to blow up, and that one's even bigger. That I could that. that could fuck the whole everything up. Yeah, one or two like giant dormant volcanoes that people kind of forgot about built cities on spit some ash in the and all of a sudden mother nature says you know what let's get that thing fired back up again you know <laughs> yeah that would mess you guys up and uh, uh only and i hope this doesn't happen for the love of pete you know 
<laughs> but once in a while, we have a celestial uh, intervention. Oh boy! Uh, which pretty much pretty much means the end of my program here. Uh, yes, uh, that's my termination. Would be uh, you know a nice uh, asteroid, a comet, something yeah. like that. We'll sneak through, and uh, and then what happens to me is what happened to the dinosaur death, and uh, we don't want that to happen, eh? Not, not unless somebody just happens to survive in a couple of people in a cave or whatever. Yeah, well, hopefully, or uh, uh, maybe Musk t- takes you to Mars, and you got a f- about six you up there. Huh. The Deborah got hit. I don't know what you're gonna do, you crazy fucks. I don't mean to like tell you what to do, Death. Right. But uh, you're hosting. Did you want to do feedback or feedback? Yeah. You mean uh, feedback? We got feedback. <laughs> I don't know if I should give you the power, but are we doing feedback? Uh, you mean feedback? We got feedback. Yeah, uh, this is the feedback. We got feedback. And I'm telling you right now, I'm killing this. Death does not shill products for f- fucking humans so they can do whatever you do with your, like, coins and papers and numbers and computers, whatever you guys hold value to. And then you shill, oh, go to my Amazon page uh, or no, go to my uh, Life in the Dutch Hall website and click on our Amazon banner and then some of the money's going to come back and help our show. Ugh. Death doesn't do that. I don't do that shit. You don't I'm not going to shill. You don't Patreon either, do you? No, I don't tell you to go to patreon.com slash Dutch Hall and click on her or fucking give us five bucks a month or ten bucks a month. That's like six, 60, no, 60 bucks a year or 120 bucks a year. You can be like the queen of the show, like Jen Husko. I would never stoop so low as to do something like that. No, not death. Not death. And death would never, ever, ever tell you that if you're suffering from some sort of malaise, doubt, depression, if you're, like, considering me, you know, that maybe you need to get some better help, you know, and you go to life, you go to uh, betterhelp.com slash Dutch Hall and uh, better help. I would never tell you that they're not a... uh, a self-help line. They're not a, a crisis line. They're discreet professional c- counseling done um, in, anywhere from where anywhere you are in the world. You know, why not join the millions of people today? I would never say. No, you would never <laughs> spell it out. Either, <laughs> you know, and, no, I wouldn't say go to uh, better h e l p dot com slash Dutch Hall, and I would never tell you that Dutch Hall listeners. Using that code will get 10% off their first month. I wouldn't say that. No. I would never do that. Not but uh, that's what you're supposed to do for this segment called Feedback. Oh. So I must say to all you people, I don't care if you sent an email to live from the Dutch Hall at gmail.com. I don't care if you went to Instagram, Facebook, Twitter or any of that stuff at Dutch Hall or Live from the Dutch Hall or The Dutch Hall. You look it up, Dutch Hall, and talk to Pete. You He might uh, respond to your feedback, but I have no, I have no uh, interest in it. So go fuck yourself. <laughs> and that is feedback. We got feedback. I'm glad you, did. I'm glad you killed that segment, Death. Yeah, we would never do that. Would never do that. Which leaves us. <clears throat> let's see. You want to do uh, uh, rapid fire dead people? Sure. <laughs> we can just uh, let me see. Uh, well, I'll see if some of the, like notables. Let me see here. I'm going go on the internet. Sometimes that'll uh, refresh my memory. So if I go here and just put in, uh, uh, there we go. That's perfect. Let me see here. Uh, Stars who died tragically young. Huh? 
That's a good idea. Want to go to that one? Yeah. <clears throat> okay, Aaliyah, plane ride. A hot chick and a plane ride. Winehouse, we talked about her. Mm-hmm. Who's that? Oh, I don't even want to talk about that. That was sad. He was trying to save her kid from drowning. Okay, I have to I have to get out of this. This sucks. <laughs> Ten famous people. Oh, here we go. Um, yeah, I don't know. I like film. Yeah. I like film. I was just actually, um, just recently went to that, uh, Western movie that Alec Baldwin was working on, you know? Uh huh. Hanging out on the set? Yeah. I haven't hung out on a movie set, uh, since that, uh, uh, Bruce Lee's kids movie there. Oh. Yeah. That was the last time I was really, remember being on a set, but, uh. Um. Yeah. So, you know, I never really. Um, I was never really into the hip until the later stuff, eh? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that last, you, 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 I imagine you hung out on that last tour a fair bit. Yeah, yeah, I was on that whole tour. Yeah. Hmm. yeah. Why'd you take Gandolfini death? I gotta know. Oh, uh, he do it to himself. Ah, <laughs> Gandolfini. It was like. Um, I gotta tell you, I was a little. I, I love the Sopranos. I love the Sopranos. Mm-hmm. Didn't care for the ending. <laughs> and, they cheated uh, you. <laughs> the ending. Yeah, I mean, uh, really, come on. Yeah, I mean, you should have at least showed me in that. You should give me a cameo in the end, you know. But mm-hmm. you just, just make people assume or not assume that I was in the movie. Like, come on, man. No credit. I'm no. not saying that's why I did it. I mean, uh, sometimes your numbers up, your numbers up. You know. Gotcha. But Gandolfini, he was uh, fun to party with, to be honest with you. Oh yeah, yeah. So um, I don't, mind, I didn't mind partying with him. He was you a big coker, it. eh? He was oh, like, yeah. we, we got all gacked up together. Didn't know that. Yeah, yeah. That catches up to you. Heavy eater too. Yeah, yeah. Loved cocaine though. Loved cocaine. Mm. Apparently, uh, he would go on like three day benders during uh, Sopranos, eh? Oh, no. And uh, just, uh, just loved his cocaine. This kid was in the new movie, eh? I like to see it. Yeah, I, I guess it's getting a lot of like. The thing about when you have something precious like The Sopranos eh, is that people uh, they they have expectations. You know, it's yeah. like when they come out with Star Wars again. You know, like you want doesn't matter how good that it was shitty the Jar Jar Banks one, but you were that was the first Star Wars since like the first three Star Wars, which yeah. were like held on this pedestal for so long. And then you come out with the Jar Jar Binks and the kid racing the thing. And people are like, fuck this. Mm-hmm. And, um, it's just kind of the same thing. Are they getting bad reviews for that movie? Yeah. Oh, I didn't know that. Well, uh, it's just from, uh, from people, from Sopranos fans. They are. Oh, yeah. 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 And I think cause they were expecting it to be like, uh, the Sopranos. what they want it to be. Yeah. yeah. And so if it wasn't, it's kind of tough, hmm. but yeah, I wouldn't mind seeing it. It's I, I wouldn't mind seeing it, but I have, is uh Joey Diaz in that? Yes. Yep. Man, I haven't visited that guy yet. I'm surprised. <laughs> <laughs> I'm surprised you haven't visited old Artie Lang. Oh, uh, me and Artie have had a relationship for a long time, but, uh, when it comes down to it, it's like, uh. Nobody knows. It's like if you if you like get it's like you you must have had women like this, Kev, where you're like you, you kind of run into these this woman women over this woman woman over the years, and then you you hit it off really well, and you you kind of like know that you you should in another world you'd be fucking all the time, you know. Mm-hmm. But it just you just never it just never works out between you either. She's got a girlfriend, or you got a boy, or, or she's got a boyfriend, you got a girlfriend, that sort yeah. of thing, and. You just, it never works out between the two of you. That's how it seems to me and Artie, you know? Uh, and then meanwhile, I've, like, fucked all his friends, you know? Like, yeah. And then, like, uh, and he's still just there. I've Scratching just, his head wondering why. Yeah, always a bridesmaid, never a bride, eh? Yeah. That's just Artie, man. He's done everything he can. <laughs> he sure has. And, uh, like, I've just never, never gone all the way with him. No. <laughs> one day. No. no, one day. One day he'll meet you. I did kill his nose, though. <laughs> he really did, did a number on his nose. Yeah. Well, uh, close call. I mean, yeah. take what you can get. Take I what suppose. You can get. I suppose. Yeah, poor Artie. Eh? Mm. So funny. That's the thing about the funny ones. They are the mo- uh, the the talented people are the most, like, like uh, they're the ones that, they, like they the call me their muse. Eh? They, 
I'm their muse, you know. Like I hung around with Van Gogh forever. Yeah. I remember hanging out with that guy forever, you know. And he was a bit of a drama queen, to be quite honest with you, but uh a good company and he always had time for me, you know? Yeah. Good friend, uh, Van Gogh. But a weird duck, nonetheless, yeah. a weird duck. <laughs> Anyhow. Yeah, who else? A lot of really cool uh I mean uh my a lot of really cool experiences. I mean, I gotta tell you, it's just been really fun. Uh I've done so many cool things. <laughs> so like so I, many interesting people. Yeah, totally interesting. Like really, really, really interesting people. You know, like uh, you can't even uh, like uh, I would say. Um, you seem to hang out with a lot of rap stars. Oh uh, yeah, like I. Um, to be honest, like rap stars are usually in that category of taking care of it for me. Mm. You know, they like force the issue for me, you know, and I have to hang out with rap stars. Um, River Phoenix. River Phoenix. Yeah. That was the Viper Rim days. And I got to tell you, man, I, uh, I had a great time. (laughs) I mean, I just had a great time. It was, uh, it was, uh, different back then, you know, and we were in some crazy shit. Yeah. That was that was a that was quite a night, and uh, you and the Kennedys hung out a little bit too. Yeah, well, I've known them for a while, and their dad made a deal with the devil, I think, and then uh, so I was called in to handle those guys, like oh, like Joe, the, the yeah, the old man uh, Joe, yeah. I had uh, he made the deal with the devil, and then uh, pretty much. Uh, I don't think he really read the fine print on that one, you know? Like <laughs> The two boys were payments. Yeah. Well, uh, grand, so there were some grandkids in that. Uh, yeah. Uh, we let uh, we let the one boy live because he threw in some girl off a bridge or something. Oh, no. And that, <laughs> what a thing. Yeah, yeah. But we got him eventually. Yeah. We got him eventually. Yeah. Mother Nature put something in his big head. But... Uh, <laughs> 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 but uh well we got that one we got the third brother but then uh yeah a lot of the grandkids too and jfk jr on a plane ride with him you know like yeah. uh, that was kind of cool and um <laughs> <laughs> like you can't say you gotta admit like i got better stories than most of you humans yeah you really do you know like uh like most of you humans just for taking a dub with elvis you know like yeah there you go I mean, if you had that story, you you would never, your friends would hear it a thousand times. Yeah. I brushed over it. I didn't even tell you about the racquetball game before. <laughs> like we had, uh, we had a nice day together, me and the king, you know, like it was great. Peanut butter Some sandwiches. Peanut butter and banana sandwiches and yep. a nice dump together, you know? How was that? <laughs> it was great. <laughs> Ellis was fun, man. He was kooky too, though. He was pretty kooky. Um, yeah, man. Um. I don't know, man. I like it. Uh, I like uh, humans. I've enjoyed your company. I don't get you, but uh, uh, but I, I still I think you're the are the most complex and cool creatures on earth. You know, um, but I'm a bit biased. You know. Yeah. Wow. Anyhow, uh, is there anything else that I think we could like, cover today? I think. Um, I think it's been a pretty good show as far as uh, people getting to know me. Educational. Yeah. And uh, I got to tell you, man, it's like, uh, be nice to me. And, uh, you know, then I think that your experience with me will be fine. Mm -hmm. Stop running from me and uh, I'll stop chasing you. You know, I'm like the cops, you know. (laughs) You guys stop trying to avoid me with things that attract me, you know, like I wouldn't come around so much you know i just wait to the end that's when you want to go at the end when everyone likes you you know old people love me you know they're the ones that uh embrace you yeah they're my bread and butter in a perfect my perfect job is just like letting you guys all run your natural course just going in providing you the service that you're asking for Mm -hmm. you know if you guys are good to each other and let me do my shit we can maybe hold mother nature off a bit and uh and you get the numbers down naturally, you know. Hmm. I don't know. I don't know what the key is there, guys. But uh, 
be nice to each other, and uh, until next week. What do you say? We will see you in T. Oh, yeah. Wait. But I will see you all eventually. (laughs) 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 Go fuck yourself. (laughs) Go. Uh, hey, C-U-N-T spells Conte. It, <laughs> Theme song, hit wow. it! <laughs> Do you think they know it was me?